Could this be a trap? Don't worry. The elevators are safe. All right. If you say so. Are we there already? No, something tells me that we aren't. Call it a hunch. I hear something. This end to Hojo's little cat and mouse game does come across as a little anticlimactic. He just sort of finishes with you and leaves. I think it might be locked from this side. Time we got out of here and made our way to the roof. There's an elevator just over there. Hmm? But it will move only at Hojo's discretion. Of course, it's never going to end up being that easy. This is so different, though. I like. I kind of wish they didn't do any of this because, like the the scene in the original game when they got captured and they had that awkward little interview with President Shinra, and then they were locked up in the cell, then they woke up the next day, and everyone was dead. That was perfect. This... something else. Well, okay then. Looks like the elevator's working. It appears Hojo's done having his fun. <laughs> Glad to hear he enjoyed the show. We're back. Again. Yeah. Hey! What the hell's going on? Who would... We may find out soon. Let's go. What's above this floor? The president's office, and then the roof. Wait. Once we get in that elevator, there's no turning back. We're ready. Right? Huh? The elevator back there can take us down to the central terminal again. Now's the time for any unfinished business. I'm ready to do this. Let's go. So Genova has finally escaped. All that time, we were just running around playing Hojo's game. Genova's been locked up. Genova has finally gotten out, but it's purple for one thing. Everything's purple instead of the red blood we saw in the original game. I think there's a mod I saw somewhere for the PC version, which will turn that red. If I ever play this game again, I'll have to install that. <laughs> but this just, what I was saying before, the original version where you don't know what's going on, you wake up and everybody's dead. It's a little dead like Deus Ex Machina, but, you know, it works. And then you have to fight your way out after you've been freed, basically. This, though, I mean, not to say that this is bad, but like in a lot of other cases with this game, it just drags it out for longer than it really should. Because the story wasn't originally structured around this idea. Where the hell is that bastard hiding? And Sephiroth? Wait, I can hear something. Or I should say the story wasn't structured around this pace, but I've mentioned that a thousand times. But here we are. We've reached President Shinra's office. And we have yet to have our characters, like, meet him face to face. I mean, in the original game you did, in the second reactor you blew up. 
in this version, you just saw him on a video screen. But then you have, like, your true, like, your encounter with him, which was when you ran into him in the office. Well, he was, you were taken before him in the office, and he explained to you everything. And it's like, and then he dies. And this, it's, it's so different. It's so different. I feel like their characters should have had a little bit more face-to-face -face with each other before this happened. Is anyone out there? Hey! Help me! Well, well, well. Pull me up! I'll give you all the money you want! I have killed plenty of it! Thing is, I don't want your money. Please. Just let me live. Everything you want can be yours. I'm a man of modest dreams. Dropping you from 70 stories up would get me damn near to good. But not all the way. You want something more, don't you? More than this right here? Talk to me again like you know me. Barrett! Stop it! Get on TV and tell them. Tell them what you did to Sector 7. That it was you who killed all those people. Then, you're gonna tell them the truth about Avalanche. That Avalanche ain't Wu Tao or anybody's puppet. That Avalanche fights for the people, the planet. That we fight to hold Shinra to account for its crimes. That is Avalanche. The filthy sewer rats who brought down a Goliath. You tell them that. Is that really all you want? For your names to be cleared? <laughs> that is what matters most to you? More than shutting down the reactors? Than the future of the planet itself? Huh? Damn. You're lying to yourself even now. Truth, justice, honor, freedom. Vain indulgences everywhere. Picture it. Picture a world without Shinra. Without Mako energy. A stagnant, impotent world. Not a natural disaster. Who would help the people? Help them recover and rebuild? You? With their old world ruined, will they thank you for the new? I'm going to give you a chance. One last opportunity to consider what your principles are truly worth. But bear in mind that time is of the essence. And what about you, Mr. President? What are your vaunted principles? What principles? Did you understand even a single word of what I told you? I know what I want, and I take it. I take advantage of whatever I can, and discard that which I cannot. There is no room for sentiment or guilt.
the source of everything. <laughs> They are doing something here that I kind of appreciate, which is sort of making it a little bit more obvious that um, what you're chasing when you think you're chasing Sephiroth is actually Genova. Because in the original game, Genova, yeah, Genova was in that test tube, that whatever, that chamber. And, and Genova broke out. But Genova was basically at that point under control of Sephiroth. So, while it was Sephiroth pulling the strings, it was actually Genova you were chasing after. And you didn't actually encounter Genova, or you didn't encounter Sephiroth at all, until you ran into his body, which was entombed in, in materia, or whatever the hell that was, in a crystal, in the northern cave. And that's after Cloud had basically fallen to pieces. And then it's discovered that Genova was under his control. And you weren't chasing him. You were actually chasing after Genova. And Sephiroth wasn't acting physically in the world himself. He was manipulating others to do his bidding. Manipulating Genova, controlling Genova. Manipulating the Sephiroth copies or clones. Of which Cloud was one of. In this, though, you see Sephiroth standing there. And then it sort of flashes to an image of Genova. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. And, hey, you know, all that does kind of make sense that you're sort of giving away a lot of these sort of plot points, which shouldn't really be terribly obvious to you until later in the game, or later in the story, I should say. Because they're assuming that a lot of the people, the, the base, the people that you really do have to please with this game are fans of the original, not new fans, not people who are uninitiated in the game or the series so you gotta make the nods you gotta not insult their intelligence like nobody who played the original game is gonna not know that it wasn't Sephiroth that actually killed President Shinra that it was Genova under Sephiroth's control so it, it makes sense to like more or less have it look the same way but have it be a little bit more clear that Sephiroth is just in control. He's not actually here. Now, something else they did, they, they finally did have the face-to-face -face interaction. Oh, well, oh, air's down. They finally did have that face-to-face -face interaction between our characters and Shinra, at President Shinra. You know what? Does he have a first name? I don't know. Rufus has a first name. But President Shinra doesn't seem to. Anyway, they had that face-to-face -face. And his conversation with Barrett as soon as he gets his pistol is reminiscent of his um, speech he makes in the original version, which I, I'm not really remembering exactly what it was he said in the original, but more or less the tone was similar. Shinra, once he felt like he had the power, meaning he had his gun, basically... Like, oh, like, what, what are you going to do? Like, the world needs Shinra. And maybe that's actually true. Um, you got these, in real life anyway, making a connection. You have these big mega corporations. Now, as distasteful as they tend to be. <laughs> and you get these mega corporations that, are, that have way too much political power. That have way too much money. Have way too much control over the way everybody's lives are playing out way too much control over people's um, finances, where they can live, what kind of home they can afford, or what kind of, you know, lots of shit. And that's bad in its own way, but in another sense, like, oh, okay, so if, let's say, um, let's say Microsoft didn't exist, where do you think the world of computer technology would be right now if Apple didn't exist, if IBM didn't exist? Who would have created these things? If you didn't have, uh, uh, let's say, a more um, accurate or another example would be the pharma companies, big pharma. Everyone hates big pharma. They say, like, oh, well, they're... they're terrible they're doing this they're doing that and they're making everybody sick or they're they're profiting off of people's misery is i think maybe 
the most common argument that they make all this money and then they basically put you into debt and like on all of that is true they basically hold your life hostage in a sense they hold your life hostage and saying like oh you need to pay us all of your money you need to put yourself in debt just to continue to live and yeah that's that's not a good thing i'm not going to sit here and defend that kind of thing but on the other hand somebody has to make the medicines that say that say save a person from cancer somebody had to somebody has to make the antibiotics so that when you break a leg you don't get an infection and die so what happens if they all just disappeared like well if you take kind of an ultra hippie stance like oh well the world if they just disappeared now there would be a better place like would it would it actually be so you got to take the good with the bad shinra in this world is a terrible company because it's destroying the world it's killing the planet and all of that but what would happen to the world if it just suddenly disappeared now i think if you pay attention to like the compilation of final fantasy 7 which i don't much care for and i probably shouldn't reference in this playthrough because i said i wouldn't but in a sense the world seems to get along fine without shinra shinra gets destroyed more or less and then like say in advent children people are living without shinra and the world seems to get along fine but you know the people are still living in midgar people are still living in the city that shinra built and people are still using the infrastructure and the technology and everything that shinra created so, just to stick, uh, where, <laughs> make clear what my stance on this is, Shinra is a bad thing and Shinra did need to be destroyed because Shinra would kill the planet and that would kill everybody on it. But just got to keep in mind that not everything I did, even if there was no, not an altruistic bone in President Shinra or even Rufus's body, not everything they did was harmful. Man, these boss battles can really drag out. I'm going to have to fast forward this whole thing. Death was not the one ordained for you by fate. Uh. 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 Thanks. That's it. We've basically seen it confirmed that the ghosts that have been flying around, interfering with everything our characters have been trying to do, are in some way some sort of representation of the effort or the desire for this game to play out exactly like the original did. Every time you see some event, or no, okay, not every time, but frequently as you see some event where a character or an action tries to deviate from the original story of the game you see these ghosts happen 
and sort of drag everything back to the way it, it should be. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't. So, like, like I said a hundred times before, in the early parts of the game, Cloud wasn't going to get hired to go on the second mission. Well, Cloud had to be there, and Jesse didn't really to push the story along, to keep the story where it should have gone, so the ghosts show up, injure Jesse, while Cloud now has to be hired to go on this mission. Cloud's going to kill Reno. Reno can't die in that part of the story, so the ghosts appear, stop Cloud from killing Reno. I think that's how that played out. Here we go. Sephiroth, or Sephiroth controlling Genova, or one of the clones, or whoever the hell that was, kills Barrett. Ghost shows up, heals Barrett. Why? Because Barrett cannot die in the Shinra Tower. So we're seeing this happen left and right. And you know what? I should end the episode and discuss this later. <laughs>